You heard it, y'all. Veggies don't work. They broken. Why are you eating them? You don't even like them in the first place. Hello, everybody. My name is Lana McCarthy. I am your friendly neighborhood dietitian with a master's in human nutrition. Welcome to another episode of Let Me Learn Yet. And in today's lesson, we are going to learn about how vegetables are absolutely worthless when it comes to protecting your heart against disease. Also known as never trust nutritional science headlines. The most recent headline that has been splattered all over the place is vegetables do not protect against cardiovascular disease. All the carnivore people are pooping themselves in excitement over this study. All of this hubbub and rigmarole and shenanigans basically stems from a study that was just released last month from the Journal of Frontiers in Nutrition. This study and the way the media is reporting it is the reason why y'all are so freaking confused and so frustrated with anything nutritional science. Funky science turns into crap headlines that then gradually trickles out into society until everybody just turns it into a belief. It's quite freaky. We have been told for decades, nay, maybe hundreds of years, possibly longer than that, that eating vegetables are good for our health. It's one of the few foods that every fad diet, except for one, the most recent lovely carnivore diet, all agree are good for you. I made the joke about a year ago that it was vegetables turn to be attacked. I'm gonna do my darndest to stop the spread of this bull crappity crappers misinformation. If you want to do the same thing, definitely share this video with anybody who has come to you and said, oh, did you hear some study proved that vegetables don't work anymore? And just be like, boop, there you go. It's all a bunch of crap. I am the most curious cat this side of the Mississippi, okay? I love science. I love science. I love finding out the truth about things. What's the real story? I always welcome science, no matter how anti my current beliefs it is or anything. In fact, a lot of the times if something's being said that is the opposite of what I currently believe, I'm even more intrigued and, in and interested. I want to find out if I've been wrong this whole time, right? If the methodology and the science is sound. So don't think I'm gonna be all blocked in my brain like, oh, she's a dietitian and she's in the pocket of big potatoes. So of course she's not gonna listen. Of course she's gonna think that this study is BS. No, no, my curiosity trumps all bias. Okay. So what the authors were attempting to do in this study was to A, investigate how vegetables absolutely on their own, independent of anything else, affect heart health specifically. And secondly, if raw vegetables versus cooked have any different type of protective benefits. They took data from something called the UK Biobank cohort. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. So if you want more information about what this is exactly, how they conducted the collection of the data, definitely find it there. But summed up pretty quickly, what they did was they interviewed 400,000 UK citizens. These people were asked a bunch of questions from lifestyle habits to eating habits to, you know, what their medical history was, what kind of medication they were on. And some of the individuals were actually given blood tests. Majority of them were asked all of these questions once over a two to three hour period. Just remember that. So these researchers filtered down the data a little bit and ended up looking at a little bit less than 400,000 individuals. Average age about 52, 55, I think. Majority female and 90% white. And they also filtered out anybody who had a diagnosis of cardiovascular disease. So what they did was they looked at this data and they figured out how many total vegetables these individuals were eating how many cooked vegetables they were eating, and how many raw vegetables they were eating, and looked at what happened to these individuals 12 years later from hospital data. So did they have a stroke? Did they have 
a heart attack, for instance, were they diagnosed with cardiovascular disease? And once they figured out if there was any association between total vegetable intake, cooked vegetable intake, or raw vegetable intake, they then started adjusting for variables. So confounding variables are those that affect other variables in a way that produces basically distorted associations between two variables. They confound the true relationship between two variables. Let's say I look at a group of people, I only consider do they eat red meat and what do they have any chronic diseases? We now know that a lot of the times people who eat higher amounts of red meat are also people who are more likely to smoke, more likely to not exercise as frequently than somebody who, for instance, is vegetarian. Okay, we know that people who are vegetarian tend to be more physically active, drink more water, get more sleep, yada, yada, yada. These are all confounding variables that can affect the health of an individual eating red meat. So if I don't tease out the smokers and I don't tease out the ones who aren't being physically active and I have literally a vegetarian who is the same behavior wise as somebody who eats red meat, then I have all these possibility of these variables affecting the actual variables that I'm comparing. So basically what these researchers did is they were like, what about economic status? What about the types of medications they're on? What about their BMI? Let's take out all these things. So they wanted a clean slate. And this is what they found after they collected all of that and analyzed all that data. When compared to the lowest total vegetable intake, higher intakes of vegetables were linked to reduced all case mortality. When compared to the lowest total intake of vegetables, the higher intake was associated with 10% lower cardiovascular disease incidence. But when they teased out raw versus cooked, they found that cooked vegetables didn't have any association with cardiovascular disease risk where raw did. But here's where it gets interesting. So when when these authors adjusted for things like physical activity, smoking, education, BMI, medication, the benefits that they saw of these vegetables, whether it was total intake or raw, disappeared. Which leads to the crazy headline of vegetables don't protect against cardiovascular disease risk. The author stated that the observed benefits of vegetables in their study and previous studies could possibly be the result of not accounting for confounding variables. What they found were the two variables that really affected the results were socioeconomic status and lifestyle factors. But here's the other thing, even though they made these statements, they still added on like, hey, but we still think vegetables are super healthy and this shouldn't change anything that anybody thinks about vegetables <laughs> because they did see that a higher intake of vegetables was protective against all-cause mortality. First and foremost, my problem with this study is that it, and it's not even the study itself, it's the translation of the study results into the media, which is, this is an observational study. This was not a clinical trial. Variables were not controlled for. It's why nobody can look at the study and definitively say that vegetables do not have any cardioprotective benefits. Secondly, I think this study was such a waste of time. <laughs> there is no justification to investigate the independent effect of vegetables on human health. And I'm gonna tell you why. It's the same reductive mentality of isolating nutrients in foods that has led us to become the society where we supplement vitamins instead of eating food. Like literally just the other day, I had somebody comment on one of my TikToks where I shared foods that were highest in potassium. And they questioned, they were like, why would I eat that instead of just taking a supplement? And I was like, oh my God, you guys, this is why we're where we're at. Wow, that was hard to say. Here's a perfect example. I'm trying to figure out what makes a plant grow. And I wanna get out all the variables that could possibly be influencing how a plant grows. I'm like, well, everybody says sunlight's really important for plant growth. So I'm gonna factor out soil, pH, um, nutrients in soil. I'm gonna factor out water use and I, 
determine, well, sunlight isn't as beneficial as we think because when those plants were only given sunlight, they died. No health professional anywhere is sitting here telling you, you know what, you can smoke, you can drink, you can be stressed out all the time, you can eat whatever you want, you can not exercise at all, but as long as you're eating two and a half cups of veg, you're not gonna have a heart attack. Health is, are you eating vegetables? Are you eating fruit? Are you exercising? Are you getting enough protein? Are you stressed out? Are you sleeping? All these things can affect it. So to take out one and be like, well, it doesn't really have any effect is so silly to me. It's just as silly as saying, well, sunlight doesn't have any effect on plants. The majority of these participants were asked one time, one time, what, what are your behaviors? And 12 years later, these researchers looked at their end result. If you looked at my behaviors 12 years ago, you would determine that drinking like a fish, eating out nonstop, <laughs> doing all kinds of crazy things, not exercising, leads to excellent health outcomes. Because in the last I'd say eight years, I have radically changed my entire lifestyle. So to assume that that one snapshot in time over a period of two to three hours where somebody answered a questionnaire determines how they lived over a decade of their lives and making conclusions over that time period is beyond me. I think that is the most ridiculous part of this. Well, no, it's not the most ridiculous part because let me talk about the vegetable intake and how they measured that. Here's what they asked participants about their vegetable intake. Okay, this is so good. This is so good. On average, how many heaped tablespoons of vegetables do you eat in a day? Heaped tablespoons, heaped tablespoons. Let me ask you, when was the last time you measured vegetables and tablespoons. Let me just show you how stupid this is. This is a tablespoon. Here's some frozen stir fry veggies. Let me measure how many tablespoons of this I eat. Oh look, one piece of broccoli is already like over a tablespoon. What do I say? Is this one and a half tablespoons? I don't know. Let me measure this snap pea. Let me measure this. How am I going to measure this in tablespoons? It's hard enough to get people to accurately describe how many vegetables or types of foods they're eating in cups, let alone tablespoons. I just, when I read that, my freaking mind was blown. You see, it flames, flames, flames on the side of my face. So the USDA recommends that the average American adult eats about two and a half cups of vegetables a day to receive the health benefits of eating vegetables. It's the bare minimum. Do you see how much this is? Look at all these veggies, okay? To me, this doesn't seem like a lot, but to a lot of you, you may be like, holy crap, that's a lot of vegetables. The average amount of vegetables that the participants ate in a day was this much. Might even be a little less than this. A third a cup of vegetables a third a cup of vegetables, you guys, five tablespoons of vegetables. The recommended intake is closer to this. What was the highest intake? Two thirds a cup. Do y'all do y'all see how much that is? Two thirds a cup of veg over the entire day. I really want to put this in perspective for anybody who's kind of questioning, oh, big deal, it was only a couple tablespoons they still found what they found, you're full of crap, Lana. Let's apply these exact same standards to an exercise study that I choose to conduct. I wanna find out, is it true that exercise has any type of health benefits, specifically with reducing risk of cardiovascular disease? So I get 4,000 Americans, I sit them down at a kiosk, they don't have a calculator with them or anything, and I'm like, hey, how many seconds on average do you exercise? And of those seconds, how many do you spend doing cardio? And how many do you spend doing resistance training? I never follow up with these people. And for my cohort, I find that the mean average of total exercise is 1.5 minutes a day. And that the most active individuals moved for five minutes a day. 
And I determined that overall, whether it's cardio or resistance training, that exercise in general has no association between reduced risk of cardiovascular disease. How ridiculous does that sound? That's the literal equivalent of what these researchers did. So a big part of the study was adjusting for confounding variables and so much focus was placed on adjusting for these things, but they missed two huge ones. Where are these cooked vegetables coming from? Nobody asked them about what their eating habits were with regards to overall meals. They just said, how many vegetables? Here's the thing. It is a lot harder to get raw vegetables in processed foods than it is to get cooked vegetables in processed foods. These people could have been estimating tablespoons of pasta sauce on pizza. Chow mein from Panda Express has vegetables in it. Highly processed foods that have been linked time and time again to every chronic disease known to man, but you can't really get raw vegetables in highly processed foods which may account for the fact that there was more of an association between raw vegetable intake and cardiovascular disease risk declining than cooked. They didn't think to adjust for that, which I find really interesting. And while they did restrict people who had a diagnosis of cardiovascular disease from being included in the data, here's what they didn't restrict whether or not they self-reported having high blood pressure or high cholesterol, which are both insane risk factors for cardiovascular disease, right? They were on antihypertensive drugs, they were on uh, statins. And here's the other thing that I found that could have influenced their result. The people who were eating the highest amount of veg, the people who were eating the highest amount of fruit that were exercising the most, eating the lowest amount of red meat and processed meats, guess what? They were one and a half times more likely to be on an antihypertensive drug. They were 1.65 times more likely to be on a statin. Let's stop and think about this for a second. These, first of all, the people involved in this study, as I explained before, had an average age of 55. If they were on blood pressure medications and cholesterol medications, that means nine times out of 10, they had a conversation with their doctor where they were told you're heading down a bad path. These are risk factors for cardiovascular disease. We need to put you on these medications, but here are all the lifestyle changes and eating habits that you need to make to hopefully prevent you from heading down an even worse path. That is a confounding variable in itself, my friends. And here's the thing. One of the variables they adjusted for were for people who were on statins or antihypertensive medications. Now, I am not a statistician, but for anybody out there, could that not have possibly affected these results? If you're adjusting for people who are on antihypertensive medications and cholesterol medications, that means that you are pulling out mostly people who are taking in high amounts of vegetables. So that could have also affected the results. So what is the lesson here? There is a big problem with how nutritional research is being conducted. If I had any power, I would make it a requirement that registered dietitians are involved in any type of study looking at nutritional science. I would require at least that a dietitian had to be involved in the peer review process. This whole study is another example of researchers not understanding nutritional science. Every author on the study was an epidemiologist. There wasn't a single dietitian involved in this, not a dietitian in the peer review process either, I checked. And then that research, which is flawed in itself, will then be interpreted by the media in a clickbaity way, which it is, as we're seeing. And the carnivores, the Bitcoin carnivores are gonna take it and run. They're gonna take it and run with it. So just watch out, you guys. My opinion, allegedly, is that the only thing we can determine or conclude from this study is something that we already knew. A low intake of vegetables, an intake of vegetables that doesn't even come close 
to meeting the minimum recommendations of vegetable intake are not associated with health benefits. This is why it is so important to know the details of the studies that are being reported in the media. We also know that I hate the media when it comes to reporting on nutritional science information and that they are overall doing society a great disservice and that you should not listen to them. Do not listen to them. Do not read a headline and think that it's fact. Just don't. When you have a question about nutrition, this is the biggest one, do not ask your doctor. Don't look to the media. Don't look to the influencers. Ask a freaking dietitian. And I'm not saying that dietitians are perfect and they can't be wrong as well, but they are way more likely to know what they're talking about than people who haven't even been formally trained in nutrition. If you're like, well, I can't afford a dietitian or I don't wanna make an appointment just to ask them a question, not to sell myself here, but I'm gonna do it. This is why I have a service where people can call me and ask me whatever they want about nutrition and get an expert's opinion or maybe a little bit of education. You just have one question. You don't have to make an appointment with me and have a full initial consultation or anything. If you can't talk to a dietitian, just know that what you're reading in the media, nine times out of 10, it ain't freaking true. <laughs> so that's everything for today's episode. We have learned that nutritional science is a mess and the media stinks and don't trust headlines and that carnivores are gonna be coming for you talking about this study, but you're gonna be informed and you're gonna share this video with everybody you know so that they can learn the truth as well. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and chatting about this. If you have any thoughts about this study or you want me to tackle other studies or headlines that you've heard about where you're like, is this true? Is this nonsense? Leave a comment below and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.